Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be going further with the activity 4.5. Um, you can see this is where we left off last time. We had a working model um, where the eccentric cam was pushing that follower rod up and down. Really our goal is to look at a couple of things. Uh, one, what if the cam is a different size? And two, what if the cam is a different shape? How do I go about this? Because what we're going to do in this activity is actually create motion graphs which basically means that we are going to track the angle that you see of rotation here. And we're going to keep track of what that angle is at any given time and what its corresponding height of the top of the follower rod is. So it's going from five to five and a half, it looks like. But at what point, you know, when it's at 30 degrees, what's the height? So on and so forth. Okay, that's what we're going towards. But the first thing we have to be able to do is work with this model and, and swap some things out. Okay, so let's stop with this. I'm going to hit escape to stop my animation. And let's say, uh, first of all, what if we had a different sized cam? Well, it's really simple. Over here, I have my eccentric cam. And what I'm going to do is I can right click on this, or I can double click over here, and I want to open it up in a separate tab. So when this thing opens up, here's the eccentric cam. And you'll remember we went to create, or excuse me, modify, and we used change parameters to set up parameters for this table. So what if I tell you the, do the nominal diameter this time is going to be a different size? What if it is? 1.25 okay you'll see that everything scales up i'm going to click ok i'm going to click save i'm going to say give it a name version description di diameter is to 1.25 now i'm going to hit ok by the way we should be saving often every little like minor step that you do save 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 over and over again okay what's going to happen is we go back to this original assembly and you'll notice you have a little icon out there and it says the one component is out of date and it even shows you that it's the eccentric cam is out of date, right? So if I click on either one of those, what it's going to do is update and watch the cam here. You're going to notice it grows in size. There you go. Okay. Now, still have the context set. You can see here, right? So if I come over here and I right click and I animate the model, you'll notice now it works again. Don't worry about the fact, by the way, that this imaginary ruler is being cut through. I mean, it's just there for measurements. It's not actually part of our design. What it's allowing us to do is to track then the difference. You'll notice it doesn't go from five to five and a half. Now it goes from five, to five and a little over that, right? So that's the whole point. That is how you change the size is you go and open up the original cam and you change the nominal diameter in the parameters table, okay? There's the first step. Now let's go, what if I had a different cam and a different size? So what if we had to switch to say the hex cam, okay? Really easy to do. What I can do is right click on the eccentric cam and delete it. It says, well, you know, you got some things like joints in there and you have the contact set in there. You got a lot of stuff that's referencing the eccentric cam. Are you cool with this? And the idea is yes, we're okay with it. We want to really delete it, okay? And we're just going to go drag and drop in say the hex cam in its place. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna drag it over here so I can see a little bit easier. I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees, hit enter. Okay, so it's ready to go. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and open this up on the side. Let's say that we were given a nominal diameter of say 0.75, okay, just to throw out a number. I'm gonna come over here in the, in the part file, I'm gonna change parameters, I'm gonna change it right here to 0.75. Hit enter, there we go, it's a little bit smaller, right? Click okay. I'm going to save this. I'm going to say PIA is equal to 0 0.75, so I know why I saved it in that, in that case. Back to the assembly. Again, out of date. Okay. Let it do its thing. And there we go. Shrunk a little bit, right? So now our job is to get this thing adhered again back to the axle. So we're going to follow the original steps we did in the, in the last video, or not in the last video. But I hit J for joints. We do not need to capture this position. There's nothing fancy about it. We do need to go here and choose the center of the hexagon and the center of the axle. It's a rigid constraint, which forces them to rotate together. It's like hot gluing them together. And it looks like it's a little off center here. So I'm just going to take this and kind of move it over. Maybe you're up right there. That's pretty good. Okay. Click OK. It doesn't have to be exact in this case. So now, the problem is that contact set that we had between the eccentric cam and the follower was gone. We need to re-enable that. You can see it's already enabled. We just need to go ahead and add it. Okay. 
So I'm going to go to, uh, let's see here, assemble, new contact set. I want a contact set between the follower rod and the hex cam. Click OK. Now, the other thing that's changed here is because we have a smaller cam than what we did last time. Oh, look at that. Actually, the rest position is going to be fine. Okay. Let's go try this real quick and see what happens. Right click, animate model. Ah, there we go. There may come a time, all I was going to say is there may come a time if the cam is so small that this doesn't actually go all the way down to where it's supposed to. And if that happens, you may have to come back up to the joints to the slider and edit the joint limits. The rest position may not be that low. So for instance, notice what happens if I change it to two and I click on animate model again, just to show you what would happen. See that? Isn't that weird, right? So we want to make sure that that limit is where it's supposed to be, okay? Go back, animate the model. Now it looks like I'm all, all kinds of mess things up, but Anyway, don't go messing around with that unless you have to. That might be a good idea to come pull me over if you need help with that. But now you have an idea of how to change out the cam and how to change the nominal diameter within the part file itself. And that's everything you need in Venorwise in order to complete motion graph assignment. Okay. So the rest of this, the next video that I create will be actually what you're doing with the motion graphs and how to create them. So I'm focusing on the graphs and not on, on Inventor, on Fusion. Okay. Um, hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, you can ask me in class.